Hey, what's up guys? So today I'm going to be talking about how to play through interruption or more specifically, uh, you know, how to play against trap decks. Um, I think this is a really good topic to cover, especially because Dragma Elec is walking around, Invoked Elec is walking around, like, uh, or Invoked Dragma Elec is also walking around. You have Geist, you have Gru, um, essentially like a bunch of trap decks um, that have like really powerful, you know, trap cards. And so, you know, Jesse caught and once told me that like there's no greater satisfaction you know, then to stare down five back row and play through all of it and actually win the game. And so that's exactly what I'm going to show you guys today. And I hope you guys get to learn something from this, um, you know, how to like bait interruptions, um, how to like, you know, essentially tell what kind of interruptions your opponents have. And also the showcasing the power of Infernoble, because that's the, the combo choice or combo deck of choice that I will be playing today to show you how to play through back row. But without further ado, we're going to jump right into it. We'll see you guys in there. Hey, what's up, guys? So now I'm going to be showing you guys a match against Dragma Elic, or Dragma Elic uh, Synchro. And so the strategy is pretty crazy. And then we're going to showcase game three um, just mainly because you went up really broken. But I think um, I show you how to beat this like six interruption his six interruption board um with like the cards that i have so um we're gonna start off with he's gonna just, like look at his hand he opened up jet <clears throat> with tuning and he's gonna mill a conquistador which is so good normal jet i'm gonna activate phantasmi on the link reboot here to draw a card put back fire flint he's gonna go golden lord dump golden lord off jet make fiber he's gonna basically go like classic noodle fiber place and on herald plus a savage um, I mean, I don't have anything else to stop him. And I decided to play Board Breakers and Infernobles instead of playing Hand Traps. Um, and this is a new theory that I've been testing. And so uh, it seems to be working. So uh, let's see what happens. You'll see it also open up Nadir, uh, which is so crazy because you can go Nadir, dump Titanclad, get access to Ecclesia, and then Ecclesia is going to get access to him to Punishment. So now he has essentially two pops. And then at end phase, he's going to use um, Conquistador to get a Scarlet. And um, the Titan class is going to get him a Fluid Elite, which is just so crazy. So let's look at what he has and let's evaluate his board. So he has Savage Negate, Herald Negate, Conquistador Pop, uh, Punishment Pop for two, and a Fluid Elite in hand. That's six interruptions. That is six interruptions. Three pops, uh, two negates, the third negate. So we have to figure out how to play this. So of course we have Pank, so we're going to start off with Pank. And then we're going to switch Phantasm into attack mode and bait out a Conquistador here. Uh, I'm going to chain out the Pank to uh, essentially target the Savage. And then he's definitely going to then essentially uh, Conquistador doesn't target. So it's going to pop the Phantasm. Um, I'm then just going to attack. And then at end of battle, I'm going to bait out another negate with uh, evenly match. So that was uh, pretty, pretty good in, in, in my opinion. Now uh, at the end of main two. I'm going to start off with Rhoda, and I want you guys to pause the video and think about what you would search with Rhoda here at this moment in time. Uh, there's actually a really critical mistake that people would make with Rhoda, and um, I just want to see what you guys would pick. So pause the video, give it 5, 4, 3, 2, 1 second, and now we're back. So with Rhoda, I actually don't search Neospace character, and that's actually what a lot of people would have done. Instead, I search Oliver. Well, why do I do this? Well, essentially, it's a form of like bait. Um, just so that I put him on, like, I let him know that I have Oliver as an extender. So that he doesn't interrupt Ogier, for example. So we're going to see Ogier, and he's going to choose not to interrupt it. Why? Because he knows I have an extender, I can keep playing through one pop. I'm going to dump the Gear Freed, and then, instead of using Durando, I use Heritage of the Chalice to search. Well, why do I do this? Well, essentially, because of Punishment. So Punishment, right, would have gone, um, him access... It would, have, it would have essentially just pop Ogier, and if I try to equip the Randall to the Ogier, he would have just popped the Ogier so that the Randall falls off the Ogier. And if I try to equip Ogier to his monsters, he would just send Intis and then pop both. So uh, the best line of play here would be to activate, um, you know, Heritage of the Chalice and search for Null, and then hide this equip spell from him so he doesn't know that I have access to it. I'm then going to special summon Renald and then use Renald's effect to add the Gear Freed back to my hand. Um, the real reason I do this is because now... I force out his punishment here, but he decides not to even punishment here. Instead, he's going to wait for me to make a soul day. So I'm going to choose both and turn them into a soul day and use the soul day's effect to search. 
at this point in time, he's going to actually punishment it. Um, the main reason being, um, he doesn't want me to send his, uh, equip cells for cost to special summon a gear freed for free. I think that was his logic, but that's going to be a big misplay. He's going to send, send Intis to pop his own Scarlet just so he gets access to, um, you know, Scar Scar Scarlet Sanguine's effect at end phase. I'm going to use Durandal's effect to search, like hiding the Durandal, as I was saying, holding your hand to search the Stolfel. I'm then going to be able to summon Gear Free by banishing the Durandal, use Ogier to equip to the Gear Free so that I can negate his floated leaf. And now, look at this, two warriors. A Stolfel is a wonderful extender, um, and Oliver discard the red layers to uh, summon. Make uh, a sold, send two, negate the floor to Lee as he tries to activate, special summon Genba, go Link Ross, summon two tokens. Uh, at this point, I'm going to make Metamarcher, bring back the Genba. And now I'm going to go into Halky Fibrax. So at this point, um, a lot of you guys might be wondering, like, uh, like Pack, why don't you, um, like, you know, like, why don't you essentially go for, like, Tatsunoko and, like, end on more interruption? The problem is I didn't have a hand. If I had like an extra red layer in my hand, I could actually just go for more interruptions. But um, I, at this point in time, I have to like go for the Herald play, which isn't like the most optimal, but it's like the best thing I have at this point. Uh, go for a Roradon, summon O-Line, make, um, you know, Roland, Chain Link 1, Chain Link 1, O-Line, Chain Link 2, Roland. Uh, get another token and use both of them to turn into a Omega. And then Omega is actually going to come up in the future. It's actually a really, really powerful card. I'm then going to add Phoenix Blade to my hand, and then I'm going to, you know, use Jet Effect to discard the Phoenix, and then now make Charles. Um, I'm going to equip the Oliver to the Charles so that I can pop his uh, Savage. <clears throat> and then I'm going to use the effect of a Soulful, and that's going to come up later as well. Uh, add the Phoenix Blade back to my hand. At end phase, he's going to trigger, uh, you know, Scarlet Sanguine to set his uh, Aquero. And I'm going to trigger my Roland to add the Renal to my hand. And then at this point... He's going to activate Titanclad, but then this was like kind of like a soft cheat by him. Like, uh, he actually didn't send Titanclad, he sent Intis. So, um, I negated it anyways with Harold, but I just like wasn't, you know, paying attention at the time. And the main reason being that like, you know, I just played through six interruptions. And so I was like, I was kind of like doing like a, whew, you know what I mean? Like, I just played through six interruptions, man. Um, I thought I did the best I could. And so, uh, that was definitely a misplay. I would have had an extra Harold on the board, but that would have been fine. At this point, he's going to go Conquistador. Pop my Charles, uh, which makes sense. And then he's gonna, um, I'm gonna activate Durandal's effect because it has a secondary effect, which says that if this, if the equipped monster is sent to the graveyard, um, and Durandal is sent to the graveyard also as a result, I can actually reborn any level five or lower fire warrior monster in my graveyard, but then I'm locked into warriors. So I actually targeted my Ogier, but then he's gonna chain uh, Haquerel to it so that I don't get the monster reborn. But that's okay with me. He's gonna attack the token and has no way to out the Gear Freed. And that's why Gear Freed is so insane. In standby phase, a soul is gonna be on one counter, which means that like uh, in one more standby phase, when it, I can actually reborn any fire warrior monster in my graveyard or banish pile. And guess what? That's right. I can actually reborn back Charles because it was properly summoned. Um, anyways, I'm gonna go special summon uh, Renald. Use Renald to add back the soulful to my hand. The main reason I added back a soulful because I had a cool line in play in which I was actually going to use um, summon a soulful, banish like uh, Roland, uh, making this a five. 5 plus a 1, which is now a tuner, is a 6. 6 plus Dolphin means I can Trish up. But then I realized at this point in time, there's, like, didn't make sense to Trish him because there's, like, no good cards to Trish him in this graveyard. And he had no cards in hand. So, like, I basically banished a card on the field, but he had multiples of Conquistor, and, like, he had an extra Aquero. So, like, just didn't make, didn't make sense. Um, so, at this point, I'm going to use a Soulful. Um, I'm going to go into Hockey Fibrax, and then summon a Vylon Sphere. Um, this is going to be pretty neat because now I'm going to link use all of these into a access code. And like you saw that when I summoned Renault, I didn't add back another Durandal because I knew I had a violence here in my deck. So I can just equip the Durandal and then use Durandal's effect now to add. Um, then, like I was running out of resources, so I had to add a Fire Flint there. I'm going to use access code to pop the unknown and then slowly chip through the rest. After I pop Golden Lore, I'm going to shuffle back the Omega into my extract and shuffle back his lore so he has no way to beat over Gear Freed. And then um, I'm just going to attack for maximum damage Haquero with access code. And then I'm going to attack his Ecclesia and then use the effect to equip a Conquistor and not send a Conquistor to his graveyard just so that he doesn't get the plus off of that interaction. At end phase, he's going to set a Scarlet Sanguine. He's going to top deck a Nadir for Christ's sakes, but he's going to get Ecclesia, special Ecclesia, and then I'm just going to negate it, and then he's just going to scoop there. 
And like you see that I literally played through six interruptions, guys. And like even on the following turn, a Sofo is so crazy. Like I said before, that would actually bring me back Charles. So um, from a grind game perspective, this deck is really, really powerful at grinding. And it's really, really strong. Once you get going, it's really hard to beat because Gifford is just such a monster. And then Oliver making those monsters untargetable as Ogier making them undestructible is just so crazy. Um, you might be wondering why did I equip double Oliver to Charles because I misplayed because technically he wouldn't be able to conquistador my card. The main reason is because I actually only play one Ogier now. I was testing one Ogier and that was like it actually came up there where I needed the second Ogier in my deck. Um, which would have been so nice because that meant he couldn't have broken my board. Um, but... Yeah, that's pretty much it, guys. And now we're going to go into replay number two, where I actually play against Alter Guys, you know, a deck that I'm, you know, known for. And it's going to be actually pretty interesting because, you know, as someone who's used to play guys, I'm now on the other end of it. So without further ado, guys, we're going to jump right into replay number two. All right, guys, we're back. And now I'm going to be showing you guys a match against Alter Guys for a deck that I'm, like, kind of known for. I mean, so he opened up Double Crackdown, you know, Protocol, Manifestation, but that's, like, the inherent flaws of Trap Decks, right? That, like... You're playing a lot of cards that are non-engine and they don't actually advance your game state unless you draw like a starter within the trap engine. And so um, I even though like he opened up like double crackdown manifestation and protocol, like he doesn't actually have a way to start his plays. But because he said five, I mean, like I'm staring down five back row, right? Like it's a very scary moment in time. But I'm going to go um, special summon red layer, a normal summon connector. And then here he's going to protocol it. He's going to crack down my Renault. Or, I'm sorry, he's going to crack down the red layer. And then at this point, I just go set two and then pass. He's going to set a Solemn Judgment. I'm then going to go uh, Normal Summon a Soulful. And before I link off, he say think. And he's going to crack down it again. I'm going to chain the Droplet on the Soulful uh, just so I get it in the graveyard. Um, and then target the red layer. I'm then going to use a Soulful's effect so that um, in two standby phases, if I have any Fire Warrior Monster Banished or in my graveyard, I can then Reborn it. Um, then I'm going to top deck Heritage, use Heritage effect to search Durandal. I'm going to activate the Durandal and then use its effect to search. So I get Ogier at this time. I'm going to go Normal Summon Ogier and use its effect. Uh, he's going to Solemn Judgment it, but that's okay because now I can go uh, Special Summon Gear Free by banishing the Durandal. Uh, equip the Ogier to the Gear Free so that it can't be destroyed by effects. I'm going to take back my red layer and then pass it to him. He's going to top deck Extravagant, which is really, really powerful. And he sees a Silk. He's going to go Silk F. And then I'm going to chain negate it. He's going to get Protocol back. He's going to set two and then pass. At this point, I'm just going to go Battle Phase and start attacking. He's going to chain. I'm just going to chain Imperm. And then I chain Droplet to outplay him. Um, the main reason why I did this is because now Silk goes down to 400 attack. And I can beat over the Silk. And I can attack with Gear Freed and get them down to like 900 life points. So he's very, very low right now. OG effect to equip again. And now he has Manifestation, Double Protocol, and he top deck spoofing. So this man has been top decking like crazy. Um, I'm going to activate Gear Freed's effect to special. Then, um, because a Soulful now comes, now a Soulful resolves. So I bring back a Fire Warrior Monster, which is going to be Red Layer. Um, and then he's going to go Manifestation, Chain Manifestation with spoofing to get Faker. Reborn the Silk, and now he's going to summon Faker. I'm going to negate the Faker from my hand, but he's going to have the, another protocol to negate that. And I was like, okay, sure. I mean, it was a good effort because I knew he had the second protocol. Um, and I just wanted to, you know, commit this to the board. Um, and then at this point, he has the Melu Seek. He's going to use Silk to bounce the um, Gear Freed, but then it doesn't matter because I can just go Red Layer, attack the Silk, because he has to come back in attack mode and then just win the game. Um, and now we're going to go into, like, game two. And it's going to be, you know, he's going to go first, but he's going to open up, like, a, a lot better this time. He's going to see engine. So he's going to go, you know, Mellow Seek, get Faker, um, you know, set two pass. He's going to pointer my evenly match, and then trigger the Faker after he solemn judgments me. Um, at this point in time, he's going to, you know, summon the multi-Faker, Faker summon Silk. I'm going to activate the Randall. He's going to Ash it, actually. Um, he's gonna then top deck Marinetta, or he had it in his hand already. Affects summon the Melody Seek. Melody Seek plus the Faker into a Hexia. And then at this point, he's gonna attack for, uh, you know, 1800 damage. I'm then gonna try to resolve Durandal again. And uh, this time, he's just gonna, well, in semi phase, he's gonna protocol first to summon the Faker and the Seek. I'm gonna use Durandal. Instead of negating with Hexia, he chooses to Ash it. So I was like, but he, it, the main reason being because he knows I have evenly matched. So he wants to like save his interruption for the evenly match. And then I'm going to go special summon Ogier. 
our normal summon OG and OG effect, and he's gonna protocol it. Um, at this point, now he's gonna have Marinetta, and then I just set one, which is evenly matched and pass. Um, he's gonna go Marinetta, Marinetta effect, set manifestation. Um, he's gonna use uh, Mario effect to bring back the Meluseek. The so he's gonna just like you know poke me for a lot of damage, and then at this point in time, he's gonna send my set evenly matched. The reason why I set evenly matched is because. Um, I think, well, first of all, I think this was a misplay. I should have kept it in my hand and let him send Durandal. If he did, I would just easily match him, but then he would just tribute Meliseek anyways. So I think that was okay. Um, I, I definitely really wanted to keep Durandal on the board just so I can pressure him more during my main phase one. So I do that. He's actually not going to negate that. So I get a free red layer search. That was definitely a misplay on his end. I'm then going to go special summon Quantum. And he's going to not respond. I'm then going to special summon Fire Flint. And at this point, he's going to go Manifestation, Chain the Silk. And then bounce the Fire Flint Lady to my hand. Summon back Faker. I'm then going to go special summon Renald. Renald's going to get negated by uh, Protocol. The effect to add. I'm then, because I baited through the bounce and the Protocol, I can then go normal summon Connector. Um, connector effect gets me Dolphin access. And then I'm going to Dolphin away his Conquery. And at this point in time, uh, he, he gets burned 500. I'm going to make a Soul Day. Get Gear Freed. Um... And then just basically play it. I thought he had like... So essentially he went Manifestation, Reborn, Concrete, and then Concrete targeted a soul to negate it. Uh, but I, but then it didn't matter because I just make a second soul and I full combo him here. And then you'll see that that's going to be pretty much game. So um, like I said, these are like pretty much the replays that I wanted to show you guys. Just to show you guys how to play around like trap decks um, and like trap players. Uh, the thing with trap players is that they don't really know what is in, in your hand. And so when you start baiting and chipping through the interruption, if you can guess what they are... And you did the math in your head that like you have one extra card at the end of it so that you can play through everything then you usually will come out on top and that's like the main takeaway from this is like look at what potential interruption they have and then i uh, look at how many cards you have to play through those interruptions and then if you have more cards than they do in interruptions you come out net positive which is how like you establish like a board and like you know start pushing back um you're gonna see me just pretty much like kill him through all of this which is gonna be crazy and uh, yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Um, and as always, please don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe for more content like this. Um, the next video that's going to be coming out um, that I have in store is going to be probably around next, probably around like Sunday, I would say. Uh, the main reason being that it's going to be me versus Shu Ping um, for, for a learning from your losses series. I think you guys are really going to enjoy this. But, uh, you know, Shu asked me to keep it on the DL until he plays the remote duels. Um, just so people don't, you know, get any information on, like, uh, you know, the way he plays. Or, like, because I analyze his play style, someone might, like, look at it and then understand, you know, how he plays as well as, like, you know, how to, like, beat him. Um, but, anyways, guys, thank you so much for your support. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Oh, by the way, don't forget to comment down, you know, what is your favorite part of the video. As well as, uh, what are some things um, that you, like, wish to learn more or like improve at like what are some sorry what are some things that you wish to improve at and what are some more things that you want me to cover in topics um you know going forward but like i said guys let me know in the comment section below and i'll see you guys in the next one peace